conventional jumbo financing. Right. So, David, right. touch on this real quick. Tell people, what is a, j a conventional loan? What's a jumbo loan? Because there's an important detail in these statistics that I want to kind of elaborate yeah, on. Yeah, so that. jumbo is anything over 417000 And uh, right now what we're seeing is actually rates on jumbo is actually very, very comparable to conventional, if not the same, if not a, even yeah. a little bit better, depending on credit score and everything like that. So the jumbo markets have, have come you know, very close to the conventional markets right now. We're seeing a big change. But even so, there's, there's different strategies to employ. Some people take what's called a piggyback mortgage. Do a conventional first, 417, and then maybe a second mortgage on top of that. So there's a lot of different strategies to be able to. And, and, I, and I think what, what generally speaking, uh, I think that consumers naturally think that jumbo financing is, is harder to obtain than a conventional more mortgage. And it's not always the case. Sometimes it's true, but it's not, not always the case, right? Not always the case. There's, there's different stipulations. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times they're wanting to see maybe reserves, uh, yep. a lot more reserves than, than a normal home buyer, but still down payments can be had at as little as 5% down. And here's, so. here's where it comes into play, because home buying and home selling, there's a lot of emotion that goes into it, and there's a lot of psychology with the home buyer and them getting excited. They, for decades, the marketing, mortgage companies, real estate companies have told um, the the consumer that um, that jumbo financing is harder. Okay, so here's what's interesting, and this is kind of the, the, the my analysis. You know, when you look at the statistics, you see homes 600, 700, 800. That's actually some of the most unhealthy part of the market, where it's really saturated. Uh, that at list to sell price ratio isn't that great. So here's what I believe is that you know everything every the conventional when you can get a conventional mortgage all those markets are healthy but when you get just above the conventional mortgage okay there's not as many buyers homes aren't selling as fast and some of that is it's a little harder for the buyer to get financing but some of it's their emo their, their thought that it's harder so they pull away until they have enough money mm -hmm. to where they think they can go out and it's a no-brainer because if you get above a million dollars someone that has that someone that's buying in that price point they've got the money they, they could probably buy it cash you know i mean literally financing doesn't have as much of an impact. There's so many cash sales and so many high net worth people that the financing isn't really as important. But that tweener, you know, number between, you know, the super high net worth guy that can buy cash and then the qualification just above jumbo, that area is where I see like a, a statistical kind of anomaly. And I think financing has some of that, to, you know, some uh, of that evidence. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if this is what affecting some of the stats or not, but I, not necessarily that... <clears throat> Uh, jumbo financing is harder than conventional per se, but the problem is, you know, if you're qualifying for a jumbo loan, you probably got, you probably have a, a business going, you probably have some complicated things. Yep, that's it. Getting finance for a mortgage is the last thing on your to-do list. That's it. You're you know, busy. And your and your tax returns are as complicated that's as it. all get out. That's correct. You know, yep. and I mean, I just saw one this week that I, literally over a three-year period, the guy lost over a million dollars. Yeah, we were able to figure out a way to. Bad back so, in the income and stuff like that, I agree. but not everybody can do that. It takes specialists to in the loan office in loan office to do that. And there's you know underwriters, and you put that those tax returns in front of ten underwriters, you're gonna get ten different opinions. And and I'm gonna tell you, we're <laughs> gonna talk about this in a later segment of the show today. But it's also the difference between them getting mortgage information from a big bank, right? You know, well, with, yes. and and somebody that really knows what they're doing. And 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 it kind of like you were saying. So what ends up happening is a lot of those consumers that are looking in that 600, 800 price range. Maybe they have 10 percent down, but they don't have 300 grand in the bank, right? So what that what a lot of them are doing because they fe they feel that pressure of of you know all the, the all the qualifications they have to do. They want to make their loan because they're so busy. They want to make their loan such a slam dunk. So you know what they're doing? They're waiting until they can save enough money to put a large enough down payment so they can just get a conventional mortgage and it, and it won't be as, as difficult. Uh, it won't be as difficult because yeah. then they have a lot of cash in, in their minds. What's that? In their minds only. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it's exactly. That's it. It's it's mentally. It's what they think. So here, here, I think here's what psychology I, has a lot of it in. Here's you know? what I here, here's what I see is that in that price range, those buyers think that. There's no way they can't qualify, so they don't even start the process. That's it. A lot of times, yeah. that's exactly what they think. They, yeah. they think that it's so overcomplicated because, unfortunately, the media has done such a bad job of telling them it's so hard to get a mortgage. It's this, it's that, and, and it's myth. It's myth.